Hi, this is Brandon with Chameleon Outdoors and going to do a quick review on a couple of items I've recently picked up from iFootage. One is the iFootage Gazelle Uprise TA5 tripod and the other is the iFootage uh, Komodo K5 uh, fluid motion head. Uh, first thing I'll take a look at is going to be the, the tripod itself. And I was looking for something that's somewhat compact. Uh, lightweight, but yet a little more robust than what I have in the Manfrotto B3 that I've been using uh, to film some of my hunts and just need something to, again, just a little bit more robust to do uh, what I wanted it to do. So, did a lot of research, landed on this uh, iFootage T, uh, it's the Gazelle Uprise TA5, so it's the aluminum version versus the carbon fiber version. I uh, looked at both of them and I settled on the aluminum because uh, really the main difference between the two is the weight factor of the tripod itself. Uh, the aluminum uh, four sections, so the TA5, is going to weigh in at right at five pounds. The carbon fiber is going to be about four and a quarter pounds. So for me, the difference in cost, um, which the aluminum one uh, that I purchased was right at uh, $215. The carbon fiber one is going for about three hundred and forty dollars. So for me, the price difference for the you know quarter, three quarters of a pound just wasn't worth it for me. But if you're really cutting down on weight, that's something you could take a look at. So uh, first thing I noticed is that the um, the bag that it comes in is actually pretty nice. It's padded. The zipper is actually pretty robust. So get that open. Um, and take out obviously the head itself. The other thing that I've found to be a really nice feature with this specific bag is that inside there's this little velcro piece that you can unattach and the end of the bag opens up so that you can put your tripod and your camera head into this bag all at the same time and um, to pack it back up it's pretty simple if you take the head off of it and you just kind of fold that back in there's just this little strap that comes in velcros down and you got it back to its compact size for just the tripod itself so the bag actually a plus i think they did a really good job engineering that and it's got the little sling to uh, carry over your shoulder as well so that's actually really nice was not expecting that um kind of a nice piece that came in with that so if you're looking at the uh the tripod uh, again, I got the aluminum bodied one, so it's going to come with uh, three different extensions that you can have. They're nice little buckles that you just flip up and back to extend them out. Really smooth, nice and easy on there. Uh, it also comes with uh, an attachment, a little bit of bitty tool that sticks to the leg if you need to adjust um, you know, the tension on the different buckles and clasps uh, that just stays on there, which is a pretty nice feature. Uh, when it comes to um, maximum heights and weights, I mean, as it sits right here, you know, it's going to be just over a foot. Um, fully extended with this all the way up, it's actually going to come up to right at five feet. And it has some ways to make it uh, extremely low to the ground as well, which is, again, I've just found a lot of the features to be really nice on this for the weight and the cost that you're getting. Uh, it has these remove or you kind of pull them out the locks for the legs but it can go all the way down oh, let me get this going right to where to lock in and at its lowest setting you know if you adjust uh, the center piece here I mean it can go extremely low to the ground um, again, not that I'm going to be using it for that but that's kind of their minimum height and then if you take it all the way back to kind of the normal locking area you know it can stick in again all the way up to about five feet so uh, one thing I did in there too was it's got this little turn lock to raise the height of this centerpiece which is pretty smooth it locks in nice and easy um, it's got uh, a weight hook in the middle and one of the features that I mean I personally won't use very much but uh, uh, is something that if you're using it for I guess 
videography and things like that, you can take this middle piece out and flip it over and mount your camera from the bottom side and get some really super low shots with it there as well. So again, just depending on what you're using it for, for me, like I said, I'm filming mainly my hunts, so I won't use that piece of it, but it is pretty interesting that uh, that gives you that as an option. And you just twist it back on and then lock it back in place. Uh, the one thing that I did find to be a negative when I first um, took this out of the box was this mechanism that locks the bowl uh, in place to where you can level it uh, nice and easy. So it came with this one, which is the same as this bottom piece. You have to twist it on to loosen it up and then twist it back down. The problem I had with this original one is that for me to get this to lock in place sturdy enough that I can move my camera without moving the bowl, which you can see right now, I'm moving this. I had to crank this down so hard, it really became almost unusable in the field because you just, you had to crank so hard then to undo it, there was so much pressure, it was really hard to undo. So the week after I purchased this, there was a special running on iFootage website where if you liked their website, sent proof of purchase, they would send you this version that came which is a locking buckle and it is a thousand times better. It opens up nice and easy and then when you lock it in place, it's locked in place. There's no flex. So for if you did that, you sent them your proof of purchase, you sent uh, you liked their page, you could get this that they called an upgrade for $20, which was just more or less covering the shipping. To me, it's a flaw in their original design that they're, they've realized and have made a fix for it. Um, I looked on the website before I made this video and it looks like they're still just sending this version of it out. Um, so if you're looking at buying this one, I would maybe reach out to iFootage, see if you can any way you can get this part of it included because that is such a better functionality piece than what came with the, uh, the original tripod. That being said, I did not have overly good uh, experience with iFootage's customer service. Uh, there, they give you an email address to email. There's no phone number to call. Uh, they would usually email me back at night. I'd try and respond as soon as I saw it in the morning. Maybe I'd get an email the next night, maybe be a few nights later. So it took a long time to get pretty simple things um, tr attempted to be ironed out. Uh, if you're going to communicate with them, I actually went to their Facebook page and messaged them from there and actually was able to get multiple responses within the same business day. So I'd probably start there if you have a question or an issue because that was by far the fastest way I was able to get communications back from them. Their email process was um, substandard at best. So, but in the end, I got the parts I needed. I got everything set up. Another feature on this that I didn't touch on was on the feet, which is actually kind of genius on their part. It comes with these little rubber feet, which are pretty, pretty stout, but if you spin it back, it's going to have a little bit of a uh, spiked piece on here. So if you're putting it into um, you know, some rough terrain or something you need your uh, tripod to dig into, it's built in. You know, all you got to do is spin it on or off to get uh, whatever type of foot uh, you want for your tripod. So the iFootage Gazelle uh, Uprise TA5, I've been really, really happy with. Um, again, when I first took it out of the box, my biggest complaint with it was the way that the bowl um, locks in place with this uh, upgrade that they provided. It is, I can't find a flaw with it right now. So I, I've been very happy with this. It's pretty compact. Um, so when I'm backpacking in, you know, doing elk hunts and things like that, it's not going to be too, uh, too large that I can't use it. And again, weight wise, it's right at five pounds for the aluminum. You're about four and a quarter if you go with the carbon fiber. So again, if you're trying to cut weight, the carbon fiber is there, but again, it's also about $125 more than, um, 
And then this one was about a 50% cost increase from the aluminum to the carbon fiber. So again, I've been very happy with, with that piece. Can't wait to get it out in the field. Uh, the other item that I uh, had purchased was their iFootage Komodo K5 fluid motion head. And with this one, uh, I've actually was pretty impressed with it in the fact that it's pretty small, uh, nice and lightweight. The weight on that one, uh, I weighed them individually and it was uh, one pound, seven ounces. So all together with the two of these, you're looking at you know just over five pounds or six pounds, sorry, between this, uh, the tripod and the head that comes with it. Um, another feature on the tripod that I didn't mention um, was it does have this ability to screw in an attachment directly to the tripod. So if you have an external monitor or something like that, it can be attached straight to the tripod itself. It doesn't have to go, you know, directly on the camera, uh, which is which is kind of nice to have. With the uh, uh, the fluid motion head, the K5, obviously it comes with a little arm that's adjustable based on how you. Uh, you want it. There's a bubble level on both the tripod and the fluid head. It's going to have a just a simple on-off turn. Uh, I guess a toggle here that allows you to go side to side. So it's going to give you your uh, your pan ability. It's not as smooth as some of the other ones that I've got. Uh, if you loosen it all the way up, I mean, again, it's not bad. It would definitely work. It's it's pretty smooth. It has a little bit of a hitch to get it going. Uh, so then you can, and it's only got doesn't have adjustability on it. All it's kind of more or less on off switches with these. And same thing when it comes to uh, the tilt. Um, there's just a little again screw on this side that you loosen up, and again it's it's a more or less on off. But the problem, the biggest problem I have with this one for my purposes. I do a lot of self-filming when I'm hunting. And when I put my camera head on here, it has a kind of a counterbalance or back to zero function that to me is way too strong for my purposes. Now, again, depending on what you're using it for, that might be perfectly fine if you've got, you know, you're doing it all by yourself and you can you can lock it in where you want it to. I mean, it locks in just fine, but yeah. For me, with my camera, I use a Sony NX80, you know, fully equipped. I'm maybe a four pound total camera on the weight on the top of this. And for me to get it to where I could move it, and that's the other problem, is if you go in too hard, it's gonna wanna shift your tripod a little bit. Uh, for me to get it to where it would function and hold itself in place enough, like it almost has to be cranked all the way down and you can hear it grinding a little bit for that to work. So for me, that makes this head unusable for my purpose, which is unfortunate. I've tried to reach out to their customer service and there is no way to adjust that. Um, they sent me a second one to check out just to make sure it wasn't just, you know, the one that was, you know, too much. They're all that way. I mean, the, the return to zero is just way too strong for my purposes. So, for me, the, K, the Komodo K5 video head, unfortunately, without, without that one item, it would be perfect. But for me, I can't use it because of that. Overall, I think the iFootage products are, are pretty high quality. The materials all seem to be pretty robust, pretty, pretty high quality products. Um, again, I was looking for something that can be compact for packing in a backpack when I'm you know, out in the woods, but yet um, it's got some more stoutness to it and adjustability you know, in terms of height. And this one to me has everything that I was looking for. Uh, just a recap on the, on the tripod itself. If you can get this thumb locking um, buckle, you know, to, for your uh, leveling component, I would strongly recommend you try and do that because that is gonna be the piece that to me was what made this tripod a little bit flawed. Um, once that was corrected, extremely, nice product. Um, the head itself, the Komodo K5, if I didn't have as much counterbalance or kind of return to zero as I was trying to call it, I would love it. It'd be perfect. Super lightweight. Everything's really nice and compact. But for me, 
this is just way too much for the application that I have it for. Um, hopefully, you know, depending on what you're using it for, it would be helpful for you. And uh, if you have any additional questions on this video, you're more than welcome to leave some comments below, I'll try and respond to them. But overall, again, I think these are pretty high quality products. I'm definitely looking forward to using the tripod itself. I'm gonna do a later review on some different tri uh, fluid motion heads that I've acquired and uh, kind of give you a review on some of those as well. But in terms of an eye footage package, really nice depending on what your uh, usage, but I'm good. Unfortunately for me, it just doesn't quite meet what I was looking for. Again, this is Brandon with Chameleon Outdoors. Leave any comments below and hopefully this is helpful. Thank you.